All This Polo Cup action is proudly brought to you by NGEN Primax Unleaded. Volkswagen Motorsport, Ferrodo, and Dunlop Tires. Welcome to the third round of action in the NGN Polo Cup here at the Extreme Festival at Swatkops International Raceway. It's the first time we've come and raced here at Swatkops, so it's definitely going to be a case of new lap records, as we've seen at every single circuit we've been to so far this season. A couple of new drivers coming to join in, and a couple more still waiting on the sidelines to come to be part and parcel of this incredible championship. So far, it's been a one-horse race. I wonder if anybody else is going to have to find that pace to get ahead of Jeff Kruger and the dominance he's had in that Universal Healthcare car. Qualifying here at Swatkops is always, always very close and expecting the times to be right up there. But what I'm looking to see is a possible first 1 minute 11 out of these engine Polo Cup cars. The cars are about to roll out. Let's go and find out what happened in qualifying. It's not as vital as Cape Town to get a toe from your teammate, but you definitely have to work together if you want to get into that top six. And it looks like the Oats boys are doing just that. Keep an eye on uh, Delon Thompson as well, starting to show some prowess in this category. And definitely a man to watch out for here at Swatkops. Clint of a side note doing an incredible job in the Glyco car, and he's the first man to get down into the 1 minute 11s around Swatkops in these brand new polos. Top six shootout now for Super Bowl. Justin Oates will lead them out. He, of course, in the Seeker car, followed very closely by Delon Thompson, who's made it through, and his brother, and looks like it's going to be a fight between Justin and Darren Oates there for that top six honor. Clinton Mercedes is the last car out on the track. And Tasman Pepper already starting to heat things up to see if she can make it through and just squeeze the boys out. She takes pole position for race number one. Let's see if it gets as lucky in the draw now for race number two. Where does she end up? Well, it's on the front row, but it's not on pole position. Oh, Clinton Mercedes, fastest man out there, drops to fifth. Jeff Kruger will drop down into fourth place. Darren Oates getting sixth. That's not quite what he wanted. His brother Justin is going to go to third, which means Shaw Wilkin is gifted with pole position. First time into the Super Bowl for Delon Thompson. Must be pretty excited with the pace that you found here at Swatkops. Yeah, unfortunately, my second best lap wasn't up to that. But uh, hopefully from heat one, I can impress and do this again in the following races. It's been a bit of a baptism of fire. It's a really competitive class, and I'm sure that you weren't expecting it to be as competitive as what it is. Well, in karting, there was also quite a lot of... It was also quite competitive, but it's quite competitive in this class, and I hope to just show everyone what I can do. Clint Brissade note, unfortunately, uh, the ball draw doesn't always go your way, and you've had a bit of a tough one on that. But more importantly, first car ever to do an 11 around Swatkops. Yeah, I'm happy about the 11, but I'm not happy about the ball draw. I think... For the last two years, after me and Dave were just pulling fifth and sixth, and now this year I'm the only one in the top six besides Darren, and he pulls three, and I have to pull six, and I don't think my luck will ever be on my side with the ball draw. But I am happy with the car. I've got to say thanks to the Signature for all their hard work and preparation. I missed the gear on my Super Bowl lap, so I think that could have gave me my first. But you know what? There'll always be a next time, and our next time will be in East London. So Tasman Pepper, consistency is always key and it seems to be the uh, story of your season so far. Oh, I'm actually really happy with uh, qualifying today. I mean, the, car, the guys have set up the car really great. We came testing and we've put in the hours and we seem to be getting closer and closer to the front. Well, now we got to the front and let's just hope that we can stay there. Front row as well, lucky with the draw for race two? Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, Super Bowl uh, first, which is my first ever one, and uh, second for uh, first for second race. And uh, drawing out in front row of the grid, I, I can't complain about that. We're looking forward to some great action now out on the circuit and a little break in proceedings now. Give yourselves a chance to catch a bit of a breath and join us after the break for race one. Looking forward to race one action now, but before we go there, we look at the big crowds that have come at you to be entertained as part of the Extreme Festival. The NGN Polo Cup is definitely one of the best categories out there, and one of the best drivers is Ben Hubbock. Uh, I was born in Durban. I actually tried to get into endurance racing on two wheelers and uh, my dad said no. So we went to a karting track, saw the karts, got in one and yeah, I basically started from there when I was 12. 
obviously racing for Team South Africa three times um, in karting. Uh, represented DD2 twice and Junior Rock once. So yeah, was racing for the flag is really quite awesome. <laughs> uh, try, and, try and get to the gym sort of at least twice a week. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just get to the car and do as many laps as possible in the carts and the car. Yeah. I definitely have to say my dad, uh, you know, he's just such an inspiration and what he's achieved is actually you know, one, of, one of the top racing drivers, so yeah, I look up to him in many different ways. I'd probably say Kyle Army, just because it was a first for me last year and yeah, just, just the track I really enjoyed and facilities and yeah. Jeff Kruger has been unbeaten so far this season. Has anybody got what it takes? Let's find out now as we head into action now from race one in the Engine Polo Cup. Super Bowl, Tasman Pepper on pole position alongside LB Clinton, Mercedes, no, Jeff Kruger in third ahead of Darren Oates, Justin Oates and Delon Thompson. A super effort there coming out of Jonathan Mahotzi and Daniel Dumini, seven and eighth. Shaw Walken in ninth, Keegan Campos in tenth ahead of Alton Bow and Palos Franken. Then you've got Jason Campos just ahead of La Reserve, Ben Hubbig and Rice Ismail fighting down in the back end. Simon Need just ahead of Shivi Bassoon. And then you've got Piet Basaki and Vota Ruiz bringing up the rear with a brand new lady driver, Cara Hill, in 21st place. Lined up and ready to go. Final instructions from some of the team principals just to get them all fired up. Time to move off the Universal Girls and the Dunlop Girls as well before we go racing here for race one in the Engine Polo Cup. We're expecting to see a brand new lap record out of these cars as the first time they've come to Swatkops now in this new livery and new format. Heading down towards turn one, Tasman Pepper gets a good drive. Look at Jeff Kruger. Kruger's tapped the back end of the Glocker car and Poseidon has been tapped on the back end and he gets out of shape again. Oh, Kruger gives him two taps into turn one and we've got chaos down into turn one. Compendium insurance are going to be phoned early because there are a lot of cars that don't require insurance policies after that incident down into turn one. Oh, a couple of cars stuck in the inside, stuck on the outside as well. Delon Thompson is one of them. You can see he is just stricken in the middle there. I think it's definitely going to be Clinton Mercedes note, and unfortunately a red flag had to be called for. Let's have a quick squeeze of that in an action replay. As they go down into turn one, you can see the action was definitely between Kruger and Mercedes note. Mercedes note getting completely out of shape, goes tagging across and slams into Delon Thompson. Unfortunately, Simon Need also getting caught out there, and Piet Fasaki. Cara Hill, very lucky to avoid that. Here's on board from Griff, Jeff Kruger's point of view. Tasman Pepper comes across. Jeff Kruger trying to find a way past. Can't find a way past. Beside note sideways, and he just helps him round. Oh, this is Beside note's point of view as well. There you can see the first tag. He tries to catch it. He hasn't even changed gear. You can see he's just revving, over revving, and there you go. Sideways, and bang, bang twice, and on the sideline. Oh, not the way you want to start race one. That is for sure. Shaw Wilkins' point of view going into turn one as well. You'll probably just see the, the after effects. As he just tries to avoid and does not avoid. Goes straight into the side of that car. Jason Campos had to do some evasive action as well. As you can see, just the brakes came on. He hit the back end of Shaw Wilkin. So there's about nine cars involved in that incident. And you can see Campos is not happy about it. And neither is Wilkin. Those two just unfortunately caught up in the fracas at the front. Restart time. No Clinton Mercedes note. No Shaw Wilkin either as they get off the line and head down towards turn one. This time a lot better start there for coming out of Tasman Pepper. She goes straight across and defends on Jeff Kruger who hangs on to the back of her. Mahotzi with a good start around the outside of Delon Thompson and going with Justin Oates and Darren Oates who sit currently third and fourth place respectively. Good move there from Daniel Dumini as he dives on the inside and gets through on Delon Thompson. Just squeezing Delon out there into turn two. As they come out of turn two, looks like everybody's managed to get through this time. And Daniel Dumini goes side by side with Mahotzi as they come under three. Up towards turn four, and it's very evenly matched cars here, as you can see. Heading up towards turn four, Mahotzi's on the outside. He has a little squeeze across. Watch out for the SMD group car going through. There we go. Nice bit of driving there from both drivers. Respect from both of them as well, just to give enough room to get through turn four. I don't think we want any more incidents in this race if we can avoid them. 
Great comeback though from Mahotsi. Comes straight back at Daniel Dumini as they get to the top of the hill and into turn five. Campos on his tail. Behind them comes uh, Delon Thompson. Delon Thompson incredibly has got back on track. I think there may be a little bit of damage on that car, which you'll have to keep an eye on throughout the race. Good move there from Alton Bow. Diving on the inside of Palace Frank and Franken shuts the door. Into GNH Transport Corner. No change up there. A little bit of a dive though, and uh, definitely some pressure being applied from the youngster on Palace Franken. Out of turn one, they come yet again, and down onto the breaking mark is Tasman Pepper, just avoiding all contact with anybody, trying to get away at the front end. There's a good move there from the Just Tool car of Ben Hubbock. He's going to bring La Reserve along for the ride as well, and it looks like Delon Thompson, as I said, might have some issues on that car. It's definitely not handling as well as it was, and I think there may be a bit of damage. So you'll have to keep an eye on that one as we go on board here with La Reserve as he goes flying past the youngster and demotes him down one more position. Up towards turn four, Germany from Campos, from Benji, then you've got Le Reserve. See Le Reserve's uh, season turning around a bit. He's had a tough start to the season, that is for sure. The top, his teammate leads, and leads the Masters as well. Remember, she's moved up into the Masters category this season. So uh, overall victory here, and possibly a Masters win as well for Tasman. There's a little bit of a move on the inside, and oh, it was a big move, as Le Reserve just forces Benji wide. The two Natal boys are going at it, yeah. They're not gonna hold anything back. Benji Hubby could probably have a little bit of a, a sit back and say, well, I can give it as good as I can get it. But uh, I'm not sure, sure if he wants to go rubbing. And oh, Delon Thompson diving up the inside. Didn't see that one coming. Benji Hubby, I think, was concentrating on the reservoir and didn't see Delon dive on the inside and get through. So as we head down towards turn two, let's catch up with Jason Campos down in pit lane and find out what happened in that incident in turn one. Uh, yeah, tough one for me. Um, just got caught up in the middle of uh, a bit of carnage ahead of me. Uh, slowed down, cars behind us, so obviously can't see it, concertina effect, and yeah, got hit from the back, got hit from the front. Uh, yeah, not fun. Uh, unfortunately, got radiator leak by the looks of it. So yeah, nothing we can do. Gotta wait for race two now. Oh, thanks for that, Jay, and uh, nice insight there, but welcome to Polo Cup. It's kind of what happens in this category. It is very, very close racing, and people do get a bit sideways. Benji Hubbing trying a little bit too hard here, I think, for my liking, and the Just Tools car goes off circuit completely. And that allows Palace Franken and Alton Bow, who are fighting hard, to get through on him as they head up towards turn five. Around his outside, though, he's also got a bit of pressure, and it's coming from... Wow, look at that. Incredible to driving from Chevy Bassoon. He comes flying through and looking for a chance to get up there. Oh, Piet Fasaki out of shape in the engine car. At the top of the hill, unfortunately, he's got it all wrong, and he manages to catch it and get back on track, but he's now lost out a lot of ground. Tasman Pepper with one lap to go. Look at the lead she's pulled over Jeff Kruger. Kruger seems to have a bit of a problem, because look at Darren Oates. He is all over the back end of Kruger and looking for a way past, but he's also fending off his brother. They've had a couple of tags throughout the race, and the two brothers now racing for separate teams, so there's definitely no love lost there, and they are certainly going to fight hard for this last part of the race. Justin Oates looking for a way through, but Darren Oates is shutting the door firmly and not letting his brother have any sniff of what is possibly going to be third place here on the day. This is race one. Of course, we've still got another race on the day to come, but you can see just how hard they are pushing. Lap times are diminishing and coming down rapidly. It's great to see that. The Dunlop tyre starting to work hard now in the final parts of this race. And Dumini coming along for the ride, seeming to maybe squeeze a couple boys out as they get to the top of the hill. One of them being Mahotsi, the other one Justin Oates, who we go on board with. This is the UR Up machine and, of course, Seeker sponsored car as he tries to close down on the Payen car of his brother Darren. I don't think that's going to happen. Darren Oates, I think, is going to hang on for third place. They're not going to catch Tasman. Jeff Kruger will definitely not let second place go away. And as she comes down towards GNH Transport Corner, the final turn, Yats Watkops, it's the Electric Life and Pepper Racing Machine to take the win. And after an action packed event, looking forward now to race number two. Across the line, it's Jeff Kruger in second. Darren Oates hangs on and beats his brother Justin to the line. Edda Mahotsi and Daniel Dumini in the top six there for the SMD group. Confirmation of those results. Tasman Pepper taking the win and the Masters ahead of Jeff Kruger, Darren Oates, Justin Oates and Mahotsi. Daniel Dumini and Keegan Campos ahead of Delon Thompson in eighth place. It certainly wasn't lucky for the Norco Bicycles car of Wilkin. I had a, quite a decent start and um, going into turn one, I saw um, someone turned... Um, I don't know if he got spun around by someone, but uh, I think it was uh, beside note that uh, spun in the middle of the track. And I saw him and I braked and I braked, but the guys hit me from behind and I went straight into him. So, yeah, it's a bit unfortunate. Yeah, and another great start. I think Jeff was hoping to go around the outside of you through one and hit you into turn two. Didn't work out. You had him completely covered. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah, I had a better start, but he obviously had a better, even better start. But I was I managed to cover it up and stay ahead in turn two. And from there, I just worked on my gap, put my head down and try to pull as big a gap as I could. 
So race one in the bag now, and eventually someone has found that special magic to beat Jeff Kruger. He had four out of four, Tasman Peppers now made it the fifth race win, and let's go and see if she can do it from the front row of the grid in race number two, right after the break. Welcome to round three action from the NGN Polo Cup at Swartkops as part of the Extreme Festival. The driver search continues for Volkswagen's new driver. And a whole bunch of drivers coming out here to test their wits against the machinery. One machine that's not going to make it out is Clinton Beside Note. His day is done. Let's catch up with one of his arch rivals now, Jonathan Mahotzi, in our driver profile. I was born in Johannesburg. I basically got started many years ago with uh, sim racing, simulator racing. Um, it afforded me the opportunity to go overseas, uh, to enter in the GT Academy, which I did so. Um, unfortunately, I didn't win that, so I came home. Um, I carted for about a year, and after that, I entered in the Volkswagen driver search, which is why I'm here today. My victory in PE last year. Um, and that was, that was really, really special for me because it was also at Volkswagen's home, hometown. Uh, I do a little bit of running, cycling in the gym, and yeah, that's just about it, really. I'd have to say it's Keiichi Tsuchiya. He's a, a very well-known Japanese drifter. I'd say Kailami because it's a, it's a very world-class track, you know? The facilities are fantastic. The circuit itself is uh, very wide, fast. Um, it's got some great elevations and there's always some, some, some fantastic racing here. That is for sure. We're looking forward to race number two now and a couple of teams that had to do some work in between the two heats to get these cars all sorted out. One man is not back is Clint Beside Note. Let's see if everybody else makes it back on track now for race number two. A new Airton, of course, 206 kilowatt beast there. Family car is the official pace car here today and has taken all these new polos around. Polo GTI is only getting launched here in about a month's time. And here we go for some more race action down towards turn one. Starting to get in the mix there, as you see, and Jeff Kruger, this time a lot neater through turn one, side by side with Wilkin in the Norco Bicycles car. Wilkin's on the inside, should have able to take some of the brakes to outbreak Jeff Kruger. That's not easy to do, but he tried anyway, and look at that, Palace Franken on the inside of Mahotsi. The three of them going three, well, three by three. The third car in that pack, of course, was La Reserve. Super to see the three of them going at it. And this hard, this early on, just means we're in for a great race. And it looks like Charles Wilkin, man on pole, unfortunately dropping down to fourth place as Justin Oates dives through. Tasman Pepper, though, capitalizing from that front row and looking for a chance for a double victory on the day. I mean, awesome to see her at the front end. At the back end, of course, is our new lady driver, Cora Hill. Great to have a new lady coming involved and getting involved this late in the season. And you can see a whole bunch of drivers are now itching to be part of this very competitive category. They're lining up and looking for chances to find some seats that may be available, possibly even some new cars. Keegan Campos looking for a way through there and fighting with Mahotsi. Mahotsi closes the door, doesn't line through. There's a dive on the inside from Sh uh, Daniel Dumini. Daniel Dumini, oh, so, so close. Can't quite get up the inside there. Ben Habig on his tail and Campos onto the dirt. Heading down some aerial material into turn number one. As they fly through here, you can see Palace Franken under attack. There's, wow, almost six cars all trying the exact same maneuver down into that first turn, and they all get it right. Palace Franken ahead of uh, La Reserve. La Reserve won't be happy about that. Look at Mahotsi forcing Daniel Dumini wide. Jason Campos giving us a great view of his brother as they head down onto the back straight through turn three. They're both behind Benji Habig and Habig doing a much better job this time of staying on the track as opposed to the off-track excursions we saw in race number one. Look at that, a little bit of headlight damage on La Reserve's car. The Norco Bicycles car seems to be having some problems. Wilkin fallen back again, now behind Darren Oates as well. So he just seems to be fading slightly. Tasman Pepper trying to stay ahead of Jeff Kruger as they go into turn five. These two were going to fight all season. It's going to kind of be the season battle, I think, unless the two Oates boys find a little bit of extra pace. But they certainly have found some massive improvements there. The Seeker car and you are up, taking on, of course, the pie in machine of his brother. This time, the roles are reversed. It's Justin ahead of Darren. Now onto the breaking markers. Alton Bow dives out, has a look in the champion car. Can he get through on Campos? No, he can't, but he definitely is putting big pressure on. I think there may have even been a touch there between the two of them, but great to see the youngster, one of the youngest drivers. In fact, I think other than Kyra Hill, he is the youngest driver on track, and he's not scared to mix it with the usual contenders and some multiple SA champions in their own rights. 
coming onto the back straight. It's so smooth here from Taz. And look at that. She's pulling away from Jeff Kruger. That's something you don't see every single day. Remember, Jeff Kruger came into this round with four wins out of four starts. He's being betted this time by Tasman, who looks like she's going to go two for two on the day. He's going to change things up a little bit in this championship. The Oats boy is trying to close down on uh, the back end of Jeff Kruger, and it looks like Justin's actually coming. Justin putting in a slightly quicker lap time there than Jeff Kruger, so he's definitely a man on the move and could potentially be up right there with the Universal Healthcare car. It's going to be very close between the two of them. Machotzi and Daniel Dermany also starting to make some maneuvers in the background, so keep an eye on them getting onto the back end of Walken. The leaders come through the final turn to complete another lap, and look at that, yes. You can see now, visibly, the gap has come down big time between Jeff Kruger and the two Oats boys. Behind them, it is Wilkin. Wilkin doing a super job and fending off the youngsters right now. But Machotzi is hounding him and so is Daniel Dermini. Those two looking for a chance if they can find one and so is Delon Thompson. Now, Delon Thompson, I didn't quite get to see him. He was tucked right behind Shaw Wilkin, but Thompson's in there as well. There's Nee diving on the inside of Alton Bow, makes a move and gets through. Bow dropped back ever so slightly. And he's now fighting there with Shibi Bassoon and looks like Piet Fasaki. The engine sponsored car there, Piet Fasaki doing a great job. Also coming out of Nathan's Motorsport as they come onto that back straight away. Look at that, the mid pack battle and the back of the pack battle. Also just as good as the one we're seeing at the front end. In fact, this one has raged for a while. We saw this battle down in Cape Town. Alton Bow taking on Simon Need. Fasaki trying to close things down. Oh, there's a good move. Machotzi dives through on Dermany. Dermany open up the door. He's going to come back at him. Can he get through as they're going to Kenwood? Very close, lots of, well, I say lots of room, enough room. Let's just put it that way. You can see the SMD group car in the rear mirror and there's some tapping. Oh, it's getting real. That's so good with one to go. We go on board with Justin Oates, trying to close down here on Jeff Kruger. That's through turn one, Capitium Insurance Corner, now down to two. Late breaking from Oates, he's closed right in. So is his brother Darren. The two Oates boys going at it now. Remember, as I said earlier on, both of them in separate teams now. They're no longer part of that Harp Racing team. The only one that is, of course, is Justin, the signature motorsport car and Payan sponsored machine of Darren, losing a little bit of ground there out of turn three. Tasman Pepper has just been electric today. There's no doubt about it. The electric life car doing a great job, and the young lady is certainly getting to grips with these new Polo GTIs brilliantly. She comes up onto the braking markers into the final time for turn five. And it looks like it's going to be a double win and a double Masters win here for this incredible young driver. Look how smooth she is on board here with Taz as we go out and into the closing stages. Going to just try and nurse the car all the way home, get it across the line, and two wins on the day. The Pepper Racing Stable are going to be happy with that. That is for sure. Jeff Kruger kept her on us for a while, but unfortunately dropped back into the clutches of the two Oats boys. And let's see what's going to happen coming across the line. Tasman takes the win. Jeff Kruger's going to get second, and it's going to be Justin Oates in the URUP and seeker sponsored car, beating his brother Darren. And a super effort there from those two youngsters, beating out Delon Thompson and Palace Franken for the top six. There's confirmation of that top six. In seventh place, it's Lorezave, and Machotzi hung on in the Volkswagen Motorsport car for eighth. Championship points heading into the next round down at East London Grand Prix Circuit. It's Jeff Kruger with two points ahead of Tasman Pepper. Machotzi a little bit further back there in third. You've got to be pretty stoked with uh, today's result. I think it's, uh, if it's not your first, it's definitely one of the top top sixes you've had in a while. Yeah, my first time in the top six. Uh, it took me long enough. Uh, it's been a difficult uh, stepping stone, but to really chuffed to our result today. Yeah. Double win and a double Masters win. Oh no, I'm so chuffed. The guys, I mean, the guys put in such big effort coming into this race. We knew we had to find something to beat Jeffrey, and I think we found it. The car was amazing. I just kept a steady pace the whole race, and uh, yeah, this is what we've come away with, and I think the team and everyone deserves it. After an action packed race day here at Swartkorps, we go to arguably the fastest track in the country, East London Grand Prix Circuit. And as you heard from Tasman, she's looking forward to it. But I think every single one of these drivers behind me is looking forward to getting to that track and going at it again for the next round of the NGN Polo Cup. All this Polo Cup action is proudly brought to you by NGN Primax Unleaded. Volkswagen Motorsport. Ferrodo and Dunlop Tires.